Thank you to my long-term subscribers for putting up with me. The Volt 876 is an exciting new interface from Universal Audio that handles digital audio conversion, a DAC, into your computer. But if you clicked on this, you probably are searching for it. So I'm gonna cut to the chase. What you're hearing right now is at 75% gain with none of the special features on it. And I'm gonna go into the internals of the device that I took apart before I uh, put this on my computer. Also, I'm gonna have a timestamp at the end here, at the end of the video, that will show you a sample of a Scarlett 6i8, I think Gen 3, doesn't matter, I'm gonna probably give it to a friend in a, in, in a few months uh, next time I see them, and also the Volt 876, both fed through uh, Rupert Neve preamp as well as a Rupert Neve R search, say, R&D tape emulator. So a 517 and a 542. What you're hearing right now, as I said at the beginning, what is 75% gain on this unit. And I have kind of tore apart this small little space that I call my studio to get it in. So this is gonna be a little less polished. And again, this is not my normal audio chain, but what you're hearing the microphone of is a DA47, a Dockman Audio 47, recent microphone for me, and a beloved microphone, I would say already. And uh, Megami cables, studio cables heading to the devices. I say all that so people can understand that there is likely no input issues or something like that. The device itself is a clamshell design and it reminded me a lot of other rack mounted devices and it's pretty easy to take apart. As we go into this open box phase, the 76 comp is set in fast. So the 76 is going from off to fast on this system. You'll notice some of the space is open and there is some space between some of the boards and that's actually usually a healthy thing in a device like this. Lowers the risk of interference and it also gives a little more management for heat. You'll note the holes on the sides of the device, especially once the clamshell is off the top, I imagine there wouldn't be a heat issue, but when that is all set up and inside a rack, you do want as much breathability as possible, but otherwise it is a passive cooling. There is no fan on board. I would recommend if you can put this in a space on the rack where you have a space just above it to allow for some extra passive airflow. Now, this device itself can be split into that, you notice that front board and a few other ribbon fed boards at the front for your IO, including meters and your one and two analog inputs. By the way, the, the inputs are Reen. And for some reason, a lot of the vendors, that's the internals of the Reen one and two, that can be instrument, mic, or line uh, versus the back that loses the instrument rating, but it has all the other items. But they're all the same actual inputs, like the plug itself is made by Reen, not Nutric, which is a common version of that. And they are combi jacks where you can put either your one fourth or in your, XL, your three pin XLR. You'll note the power is off to the side, which is a good best practice right at the edge of the device. And when you open up its cardboard, <laughs> A little container you will see there's a fuse inside if you have a power issue with this device you need to main, keep in mind that fuse is there it might be a good idea for universal audio to document that fuse and say what its voltage is and such i wanted to note that right here is the side of my tape emulator my r d tape emulator and inside had a cut a sleeve of cardboard before i took its clamshell off and that was it, it. So it's it's not a it's not a bad practice or anything like that. It is meant so if you're if any of the device somehow makes contact with the metal clamp uh, the metal uh, housing, it won't short out or something else. So I put the cardboard back, and it's happy as can be in the top right corner. Now overall, this gives you a good view of the XLR inputs and outputs, and also their little analog seventy six uh, routings. I did not take the board off the off the back plate, uh, which would have been a good way to see some of those additional wirings. You're just going to have to deal with that or do it yourself. But you can note the power distribution is very easy to see here. 
uh, the power is going to the main board as well as the forward plugs. Then those plugs are mainly the uh, power plug at the front right that lights up when it's when it's turned on. You can see that there is a little bit of extra real estate here and there. As I said before, that is good for these type of uh, modules to have a little bit of space. And you'll note these blue towers all over the place. These blue towers have uh, uh, like a red uh, wax seal or something like I'm just not think it's wax, but it's some sort of sealant uh, that is clearly there to stop you from unscrewing it. And I guess st stop the screw from unseating itself, but also to hide, it seems, the markings. That's an old school way to do that. More on that in a minute. But this is, again, your, your XLR inputs that are your uh, three through eight inputs. And then don't forget, you have your one-fourths off to the side as well for outputs. There is a chip on board. It does seem to be uh, based on... Uh, my guesstimates that chip on that chip in the center is designed to do something with the spit if I believe and handle expander rolls and such that this 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 is a clouding for as a reminder this does not have the s racks or any of that crazy stuff it does not have DSP on board so it is a DAC it can take digital audio and uh, take analog and turn it into digital and then put it in your computer via USB C however it is um, 2.0 and greater, so it seems like it's just a USB 2.0 dressed up as a USB-C. Um, even the plug that comes with it has a conversion, so you can plug it in USB-C to USB-C or USB-C to USB. Technically, it's blue, so it's 3.0 plug, but it, there, it's a 2.0 interface, let's be honest here. Uh, you'll note that there's a lot of interesting little runs inside that black, uh, in, inside that black bo main board. And... Uh, I do want to compliment some of the simplicity of these designs. There's your headphone, I, what I believe your headphone amplifiers, because they are independent to each other. And uh, if you were wondering where the talkback is, the feature that they're talking about, it's on the front left. It has its own little <laughs> decent size ribbon running all the way to the front. That's the talkback ribbon all the way at the top of the image. And then right below that, again, is your one and two mic instrument in line. I'm going to switch the 76 settings real quick towards the end here. This is the 76 setting in GTR mode, and this is the 76 comp in vocal mode. I'm going to go back to fast and then change over to vintage. This is the 76 with the 76 comp in fast as well as vintage mode on, and this is the no 76 on, just vintage. I had plans to finish the entire video in vintage mode, but it seems like it does quiet down the device which is not something I need right now when I'm just trying to wrap up the video. So there is these little monopoly houses, as I like to call them, the, these tall uh, blue things that have seals on top. These, these components have uh, seals that keep a screw from coming out, and luckily one of them that they were trying to hide the letters on uh, and numbers on, I believe, I, I think, I don't know, but uh, it seems like they were trying to cover up the letters. And... I've got one I lucked out that does not have them covered for the most part, so we're going to try to analyze them. And it turns out they're W104 potiometers. That is not the exact picture, that's just a sample to show you what they look like when they're not covered in wax. Or whatever the sealant is. They are tuned uh, with that screw on top, and basically they need to be left that way. So, I don't know. Apparently the jury's still out, of, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, if it's supposed to be intentional to be like that but hopefully they were tuned at the factory potiometer wise by the way these are uh, interestingly they're assembled in vietnam at least that's what the box told me designed in california assembled in vietnam and for those who are interested in that type of stuff uh, overall this system is very interesting rack mount 876 it carried over the 76 comp circuit and the vintage circuit from the gen 1 volts however it does have some redesigned features for its inputs and possibly its outputs and then the talk back feature to try to give it some more studio presence overall it, you've been listening to it this entire time so let's get into the audio samples and then i will give you my thank you for watching i uh, appreciate it thou nature art my goddess to thy law my services are bound Wherefore should I stand in the plague of custom and permit 
the curiosity of nations to deprive me, for that I am twelve or fourteen moonshines. Lag of a brother? Why, bastard? Wherefore base? When my dimensions are as well compact, my mind as generous and my shape as true, as honest madam's issue, why brand thys us with base? With baseness? Bastardry? Base? Base? Who, in the lusty stealth of nature, take more composition or fierce quality, then doth within a dull, stale, tired bed, go to th creating a whole tribe of fops, got teen asleep and wake. Well then, legitimate Edgar, I must have your hand. Our father's love is to the bastard Edmund, as to the le legitimate, fine word, legitimate. Well, my legitimate, if this letter speed. And my invention thrive. Edmund, the base, shall top dith legitimate. I grow, I prosper. Now, God, stand up for bastards. Thou, nature, art my goddess. To thy law my services are bound. Wherefore should I stand in the plague of custom and permit the curiosity of nations to deprive me? For that I am some twelve or fourteen moonshines. Lag of a brother? Why, bastard? Wherefore base? When my dimensions are as well as compact. My mind is generous and my shape is true as honest madam's issue. Why brand thy us with base, with baseness, bastardry, base, base? Who, in the lusty stealth of nature, takes more compassion, composition, and fierce quality than doth, within a dull, stale, tired bed, go to the creating a whole tribe of fops? Got tween sleep and wake? Well then, legitimate Edgar, I must have your land. Our father's love is to the bastard Edmund. And doth legitimate, fine word, legitimate. Well, my legitimate, if this letter speed, and my invention thrive, Edmund the base, shall top the legitimate. I grow, I prosper. Now, gods, stand up for bastards. First sample you heard was an Scarlet 8i6 Gen 3. Second sample you heard was the Apollo Volt 876. I should note that all audio here has been passed through CVox to take the fan sound out of my area that's partially treated. Thank you again to my long-term subscribers for sticking around and putting up with me. Thank you to this tiny little bit out of an old <laughs> a clearance uh, uh, Lowe's bit set uh, that managed to get this open. And thank you to Universal Audio for not going full-on crazy with the uh, security bits or something like that. It's not Phillips head, but it's some type of little Allen key one. And thank you to YouTube. Thank you for everything your creative collective does. Great stuff. It really keeps me going. And most importantly, thank you all for being here. Take care. And if you're considering the Volt 876, make the move. It is a beautiful piece of equipment.